Sushama, and today is our second reading of 70 years, Clinical Experience of 70 Years in Homeopathy by Dr. Kopiker. He tells us why he became a homeopath. What is, he was scheduled to be a mechanical engineer and he watched his uncle, another homeopath at work and was so amazed by the results that he got, he decided to drop engineering training, uh, not go in for engineering and become a homeopath. Here goes. <clears throat> My uncle, Dr. D. N. Kopiker, had been cured of a hopeless illness, malaria. Back in the day, there was literally no cure uh, for malaria, which he had acquired other than quinine, which he had acquired as a forest ranger. As a boy, I had seen him carried by four persons in a sort of palanquin, uh, like a stretcher. A ghastly, pale man, emaciated except for a prominent abdomen with enlarged liver and spleen to try homeopathy at Father Mueller's homeo dispensary in Mangalore. So Father Mueller was a priest who was also a homeopath and there's a pharmacy named after him, there's probably a colleges named after him as well. Um, very famous and gave treatment to the poor, and they recovered. Nat Muir 1000, that's Nat Muir 1M, had cured him outright, and he became a new man. The doctor advised him to learn homeopathy and help other sufferers in his forest area, where he was a forest ranger. He became intensely interested. He studied Nash, Allen, Kent, Clark, and Chowdhury, and M. Chowdhury, and had become well known all over the district. In one night, in one night, the younger Kopiker is converted from a would-be automobile engineer to a homeopath. What a sad situation it would have been for us had he become an automobile engineer. The three months I stayed with him, full of daily lectures, full of daily lectures, firsthand with a mentor, and brilliant cures taught me the first and most important lessons. Learn to picturize the keynotes <clears throat> as you read. That's the only way to read, folks, especially if you're older like me. You're not going to have the magical photographic memory of your 20s. Picture, picture, picture your keynotes as you read. Imagine yourself as a patient or prover suffering from that symptom complex and dramatize it mentally. Loga, this is the person who is dying, a patient, was supposed to be dying of cholera. And when we reached his hut, he was still vomiting and purging. Large rice watery matter. Can anyone guess the remedy? Anyone who is watching, can anyone guess the remedy here? He was vomiting and purging. He was vomiting and purging. Rice watery matter, extremities ice cold with cold sweat, no urine for more than eight hours. He had not peed in eight hours. Completely collapsed, dehydrated and crying out with cramps in the abdominal wall and calves of legs. Uncle, the senior Kopiker, observed him for full three or four minutes. So. Frequently, homeopaths would just sit there by the bedside of the sick person and observe them. We have lost that with Zoom. We ask the people, the homeopaths ask their patients now instead of observing. And it's almost as though the art of observation has died down due to the high cost of actually seeing a patient. And of course, what happened in the last three years. So anyhow, uncle observed him for three or four full minutes, asking him to open his mouth and dropped Veratrum Album 200 liquid, about three or four drops into his mouth. He got some jaggery, which is, which is cane sugar, brown cane sugar, so it has all the minerals in it, dissolved in water and asked the wife to feed him with that. No more vomiting and purging. We returned home after about 20 minutes. 
Immediately after returning home, my uncle told me to open Allen's, Kent, Clark and Chowdhury Materia Medicas. This is education on in a very, very practical way. We read not only Veratrum, <clears throat> but also Cuprum, Arsenicum album, Podophyllum, Sea Kill Core, etc. Within a fortnight, we rushed to another house where a dark, strong man was lying almost bare bodied on the cool floor, shouting that fire was burning in sight, for which he demanded large quantity of cold, hot water. <clears throat> he was threatening to jump into the well to cool himself. He was rolling along the floor to cool his burning body, as any place he lay on felt hot in about half a minute. <clears throat> the people were afraid to give so much water. Uncle took out sea kale core. This is a fungus, a homeopathic remedy made from a fungus. Ergot. <clears throat> 1,000, that's 1 M. His 200 was not available to him, so he used a 1 M. So when in doubt, use whatever you have if you don't have the potency you want. And gave him two doses at 10 minute intervals. Every complaint got all right. And we found him sleeping comfortably within half an hour and returned home. Uncle told me why it looked like arsenic, but needed sea kale. So remedy differentiation is important. When you see some common symptoms, you come up with two or three different remedies. <clears throat> and in choosing one over the other lies the brilliance of a learned homeopath, one who has studied every <clears throat> rubric related to that remedy uh, in great detail. The patient wanted everything cold. And what does arsenicum want? <coughs> everything warm. The patient wanted everything cold. Well, he took this opportunity to show me in the keynotes how opium finds the bed hot, very hot. How sulfur cools his feet because his soles are burning in bed. Like metarhinum and pulsatilla, uh, and how, and pulsatilla, how arnica finds the bed hard and should be differentiated from baptisia where only the part which is laid on feels sore. Arnica finds the whole bed hard, hard, no matter what, but baptisia has soreness only on the part that he's lying on. Opium finds the bed very hot, uh, but the patient wanted everything cold. Arsenicum wants warm water. <clears throat> so these should be differentiated. Ar Ar Arnica should be differentiated from Baptisia because Arnica finds the bed hard and Baptisia, the part laying on, feels sore. A full two hours of study by comparison and picturizing. Mnemonics, picturizing, comparison. That's the way to learn the Materia Medica and learn to differentiate between the several medicines you could use. How can I forget that sea kale rolling along the cool floor? So homeopath will never forget it if they actually see a patient. It works for a patient and it gets better. <clears throat> so we saw a tale of veratrum with very, very distinct symptoms. We saw a tale of sea kale core with the coldness all over his body his burning, but he was burning inside, but his body was cold. He was rolling along on the cold floor. And then the third is the story of Podophyllum. Believe it or not, this is a remedy that healed, quit, it cured this person. Krishna was a wayside tea shopkeeper. <clears throat> we used to get malaria regularly. Every three days before midday, Time varying from 7 a.m. to 12 noon for the chill. So from 7 to 12, he would get a chill and he had malaria. He was given a ton of quinine, which proved completely useless. And every prescription that was homeopathic was also given. <clears throat> and it was based on modality, etc. 
but it failed to stop the attacks. One day, we were both walking along the road about 9 a.m. and uncle was surprised that there was no one <coughs> in the shop and a lot of loud quarreling or talking was going on just behind the partition which separated the living quarters. Was there some quarrel? <coughs> we peeked in and saw Krishna alone, lying on a mat, shivering. So he had the chill, right? He was shivering and he was talking in his delirium. Remember, shivering and talking in delirium <coughs> and put that into your head. We rushed back home. And what remedy did uncle send me with? Podophyllum 200 in a bottle of cold water to be given to the patient every two hours. Just a tablespoon per dose. He never got another malarial paroxysm, at least while I was there. Uncle showed me how podophyllum is the remedy for loquacity during chills. Lachesis and tucrium were remedies for loquacity during heat. So when you have fever and you're garrulous, that's lachesis and tucrium. When you're chilled and you're, you're talking a lot in delirium, it's podophyllum. Caladium was the remedy for loquacity during sweat. If you remember nothing else from this, if your loved one <coughs> has delirium or loquacity during chills, when they're dying of the cold, when they're cold and shivering, that is podophyllum. If they have loquacity when they have very high fever, it's lachesis and tucrium. And when they have it during perspiration, it is caladium. And what's the point? The most important point here is that if we are lucky, we may come across a keynote in the patient, but noting it and making use of it depends only on our knowing our materia medica. And that involves action. That involves action and that is our homeopathy nook for today. And I'm gonna end the live video on this. Thank you and have a great rest of the day. <clears throat>